Your Hard Rock Canucks CS 2014 coverage is brought to you by NCIX.com. Technology connected. Hey guys, so I'm Dimitri. We just finished off with the NVIDIA 2014 CS uh, press conference and they announced a few awesome uh, features, new awesome line of products that uh, we're going to talk to you about. Uh, some of the things that they did also bring up was uh, game stream, so the ability to stream to your shield. One awesome uh, aspect was they brought up the whole cloud streaming. So they were streaming Batman Arkham Origins all the way from France. Computer in France was rendering out this game and streaming it to shield here in Las Vegas. There was a little bit of lag that, we, that was visible, but this technology is still very impressive for the, the potential future of uh, this game stream uh, technology for gaming. Uh, next thing is G-Sync. Obviously, it gets rid of all the tearing and uh, there's no lag, so it has very uh, interesting implications for gaming. And what it announces in quarter two, they will be 27-inch uh, 1440p monitors available, which is really interesting and really excited to see finally those high-resolution G-Sync monitors to be available on the market. Uh, the next big thing is the Tegra K1. It's a processor with 192 CUDA cores uh, based on the Kepler architecture. They showed us some few demos and they looked amazing for a mobile chip like this. Uh, they will be releasing a dual CPU uh, based off the Denver CPUs, which will be the ARM V8 64-bit processor, so allowing better multitasking is going to be a little bit of a faster mobile chip processor. But again, showing where this whole Tegra architecture is going, it will be interesting to see how many OEMs will be taking this technology, taking the Tegra K1 processor and incorporating it into the mobile world. But from what you've seen, it's a very powerful um, chip. And also, since uh, the next Unreal Engine, the Unreal Engine 4, will be used with the uh, Tegra K1. So that's very impressive. The graphics on this engine is, again, on a mobile system, was very interesting to see. And it looked great. Uh, shaders, physics. Uh, dy dynamic volume, uh, a lot of um, particle effects and all that stuff and it looked really good for a mobile chip. <laughs> now the next thing for NVIDIA is they're pushing towards the automobile sector and they've announced that the K1, the TK1 will be used in a lot of the cars uh, particularly for a digital dashboard so allowing you to customize the, the look of your dashboard, the uh, the type of textures it will have, so you can have rubber, you can have concrete, you have glossy, you have a tons of color customization to match the color of your interior, to match the color of your car, uh, all that uh, implications. And uh, in total of four processors will be used inside a car, but not only this will be sort of powered for the digital dashboard and just uh, giving you a better experience for a user interface inside the car, but this also has implications for uh, driver assistance so it will detect how far you away from a car in front of you it will be detecting the lanes you will provide warnings when you are sort of closing uh, close to the car in front of you it will detect the speed signs so you are aware of where the speed limit is in your zone so a lot of driving assistant uh, features will be incorporated and it will be run all on this Tegra K1 processor. So very impressive things from NVIDIA here at CS 2014. So now let's actually go ahead and take a, sort of a closer look at how this digital dashboard will work and how this uh, K1 processor is, uh, incorporates ADAS or uh, this assistant driving for uh, your uh, car. All right, guys, so we're here taking a look at something that is completely brand new that we're seeing here at CS 2014, and that's the NVIDIA K1. Now, one of the things that we want to take a look at was the ADAS system. Can you give us a little bit of a breakdown as to exactly what we're seeing here? Sure. ADAS, so it also stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, is something that's becoming a part of more and more cars today. Uh, things like blind spot monitoring, lane departure warnings, adaptive cruise control are starting to appear in some pretty high-end cars and even moving down into the mainstream. I think the, the difference is whenever car makers put those features in the car, each one requires its own special box with a special processor. It adds a lot of cost to the car, it adds a lot of extra wiring, it adds a lot of extra power consumption. The power of the new Tegra K1 with 192 cores is that it can perform a lot of functions that are used in ADAS. Computer vision, and in this case, what we're seeing here on the screen is a forward-facing camera feeding a basic video feed into the Tegra K1, and we're analyzing that video, detecting where the lane boundaries are. 
We're detecting street signs as they pass by so we can alert the driver um, what the proper speed limit is. We're able to recognize other vehicles and so we can detect whether the car is approaching us at a high rate of speed or slow rate of speed or accelerating away from us. And based on that information, then the car maker would take appropriate action. They may do a beep to alert the driver, there may be a warning that would flash, or the car may automatically brake itself if it was a collision avoidance system. Now, do you foresee this as being like a, a standard safety equipment that you can automatically update going forward? Is it sort of like future-proof? Um, that's one way to look at it. Again, the R module, so the Tegra K1 is a mobile processor, again with 192 super cores. The VCM is a visual computing module, so we have an automotive grade version of our mobile processor. That means it can sustain very low temperatures like minus 40 Celsius to 85 Celsius, so the kind of extreme temperature environments you'd have in a car. But also then it's able to do very high-end processing, so you can envision the software in the car being updated over the life of the car to add new capabilities. Awesome, and another really cool thing that we saw today was this stuff right over here, which is basically you're able to customize your experience in the vehicle by everything that you can see on the dashboard. That's can you give us a little bit more information on this? So over here again, we're using that same Tegra K1 processor, but in this case, we're using the GPU to do really advanced rendering. Much like car designers are using our Quadro processors to, in their workstations to do all the styling and design and photorealistic rendering, now we're enabling that level of graphics to appear inside the car. And so here in this instrument cluster, that's being shown, we're customizing using different materials. So over here is actually a material explorer. So you can select whether you want titanium, or brushed metals, or carbon fiber, or glass, or plastic, or car paint. And all the different elements of the graphics then are applied and rendered photorealistically. So essentially, you could customize the look and feel of your own vehicle. Now, would this be done in a dealership using a, uh, a tablet? It, that's one scenario, sure. Dealerships could enable you to kind of build your own custom car. But once you have the vehicle, there's no reason why you couldn't, on a smartphone or your own tablet, design your vehicle interface or choose the materials you want and upload that into the vehicle itself. So in other words, this technology is basically enabling everybody to have endless customizability of their driving experience. That's right. I think what we're going to see is a movement toward a software-defined car. There's a very powerful computing platform made by NVIDIA that ends up powering a lot of different features in the car. It could be the instrument cluster, it could be the infotainment system here, it could be rear seat entertainment systems, and also then the advanced driver systems. So a lot of new processing technology coming into the cars. As we announced, we have over 4.5 million cars on the road today with NVIDIA processors inside, and a pipeline basically of another 25 million more to come that we're contracted for over the next several years. So guys, that's some pretty big news, and chances are that sometime in the next near future at least, you're probably gonna be buying a brand new vehicle with uh, probably something as strong as this in it. Okay guys, so taking a look at uh, this G-Sync monitor from AOC, it's a 1920 by 1080, but one of the biggest things that I'm gonna tell you about this monitor is that it's life changing. I, I, I don't know if there's any other way I can explain it, you need to see it for yourself. As a gamer, this is, cha this, it changes everything. Everything that I knew about gaming and tearing and stutter is gone. All right, so to, to really demonstrate the power of the Tegra K1 processor, uh, they're, here they're running a real-time FaceWorks demo on a tablet. So you can see exactly what type of effects, so like oily skin, so it turns it into sort of an animated uh, face into an almost real, realistic looking face, all rendered in real time. Still a little no, uh, choppy at like 30 FPS and drops uh, at some points, but still. And the mobile uh, mobile platform it shows the true potential of where this uh, Tegra processor could go. Right behind me, though, is uh, what's even more impressive. This is a Tegra K1 running dual 4K TV. So this is a, I guess, a large, much larger 4K TV. But that one is also being rendered. Uh, so dual 4K TVs being rendered in real time simultaneously without any hiccup. Uh, very impressive again for this chip that's able to run this much of resolution, run at these uh, high resolutions with these displays. And you know, NVIDIA's uh, kind of on the ball with CS 2014 uh, introductions. So Tegra K1 
uh, has a lot of implications, not just for mobile computing, but as we've seen for the automobile industry. So again, guys, uh, make sure to subscribe for uh, the rest of our CS 2014 coverage.